Hey guys, welcome to Rosie's Dessert Spot. In this video, we'll be creating a tall red cake for Christmas with two different colored drips. You'll need a five inch cake. In fact, you'll need two of them. I cook mine in three inch tall cake tins and then I cut them each in half, which means I end up with a cake that has four layers of cake and three layers of frosting. This is buttercream that I've used. I will leave a link to the demonstration and recipe in the description box and in the card up top as well. Create a thin layer of frosting all around the cake to trap in the crumbs, smooth it out, bring the lip of frosting to the middle and then refrigerate for 20 minutes. I went on with some green buttercream first and then some red buttercream. When you cut it, it'll have that sort of two layer kind of on the outside as well, which is pretty cool and decorative. Or if you wanted to, you could just stick with that red and skip this step completely. Refrigerate it first for another 20 minutes and then apply your second layer of, uh, well, technically a third layer of frosting in red. While it's still nice and moist, so I haven't put it in the fridge, I've just sealed it in red and then I'm applying my sprinkles straight away in a deep pan. I do it this way so that it catches all of the sprinkles and they don't end up all over my countertop in the kitchen. Then I grab them, toss them onto the very top. And that way they're a lot closer at the bottom and a lot more kind of random at the top. And I like that graded sort of look from tight to loose. Into the fridge she goes and then just pop all those sprinkles back into the container. And you can see I barely made a dent. That was awesome. For the ganache, you'll need some white chocolate and heavy cream. I like to use a three part white chocolate to one part cream. For example, I chose to do 210 grams of white chocolate and 70 grams of cream. Melted it in the microwave and then I added in some white gel food color. White white icing by Wilton is a great gel food color to use with ganache. It doesn't react with my chocolate, which is awesome. I'm gonna quickly make myself a little piping bag with um, baking paper, pour in my ganache and then fold up the side so that it doesn't come squeezing out the other end. Cut a small hole at the end and then create a puddle right in the middle, slowly bringing it out to the sides. I give it a bit of a shake to help settle the chocolate and kind of um, let it spread naturally. And then I'll take my pipe bag and I'll create these artificial drips up and over the side. The longer you stop and squeeze, the longer your drip will be. I wanted these all to be pretty long and then my green ones to be shorter. I added in green gel food color to a little bit of white chocolate ganache that I had off on the side there. And then creating a swirl at the top and gently kind of dripping off little sections where the arches are. So just between the white drips. Continue this all the way around your cake and because it went on wet on wet, they sort of um, blend together. Um, you don't have this kind of bulging green section, it's all nice and flat. Take a pin or the end of a teaspoon and kind of drag the chocolate inwards and outwards in between. That way you have a nice web-like pattern at the top of your cake as well. I recommend letting this sit in the fridge for at least an hour, let it set up really nicely and then add on any decorations on top. And that's it, your two-toned chocolate drip cake is complete ready for Christmas and looking all festive. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and give it a go. If you do, hashtag Rosie's Dessert Spots so I can see your awesome video as well. And I'll catch you in the next one.